question, Lord Brown of Leadership. My Lord, as I beg leave to ask the question standing in my name on the order paper. My Lords, the ceasefire uh, agreed between the Colombian government and the National Liberation Army is a welcome step. We share the hope that it will contribute to improving security and alleviate the suffering of conflict-affected communities. As penholder on the Colombia peace process at the UN Security Council, the UK plays a key role in coordinating support for Colombia with international partners. Since 2015, the UK has committed £80 million through the Conflict, Stability and Security Fund to support the peace process and improve stability and security in Colombia. The recent visit of the uh, Foreign Secretary to Colombia to discuss ongoing support for the implementation of the 2016 peace agreement and the commitment of a further £3.6 million pounds for that purpose is to be welcomed and commended. The noble Lord, the Minister will be aware of the importance of the Colombian Office of the High Commissioner for Peace to the implement implementation of President Petro's policy of total peace, but that this department lacks sufficient resources to carry out the necessary work to promote negotiations with a wide range of armed groups that are still functioning in, in Colombia. Is it possible to hypothecate any of our ongoing financial support for the Office of the High Commissioner for Peace, and will His Majesty's Government consider so doing? Thank you, Lord, for raising the broader issue, and I will certainly take his suggestion back to the appropriate minister. I can say that although we're not directly supporting the Colombian Office of the High Commissioner uh, for Peace that, that he mentioned. We are supporting it indirectly through the trust funds uh, that I mentioned earlier, to, uh, to which we are, I believe, still the second largest uh, UN donor. This is a priority for us in our relationship with Colombia. Of course, we want the process to succeed. It matters to the whole world that it does. My Lord, so, uh, my Lord. My Lords, the peace accord with the FARC included a no amnesty policy for conflict related sexual violence. What can the UK, as penholder at the UN, do to ensure a similar commitment forms part of the talks and any final agreement with the National Liberation Army? So the UK um, continues to provide support to help Colombia tackle the legacy of sexual violence and impunity for perpetrators uh, from this very long conflict. And during his most recent uh, visit to Colombia, the, uh, Minister Rutley discussed uh, UK PSVI, Preventing Sexual Violence Initiative, with the Foreign Minister, uh, met countless victims of sexual violence, many of whom receive direct support from UK-funded projects. Uh, so this is very high on, on, the, on the radar in our bilateral uh, relationship. My, my Lord, uh, I do recall that uh, when the negotiations were underway with the FARC, the uh, practical technical advice given by the UK government to uh, indigenous groups and to women was extremely helpful, enabling them to participate effectively in the talks. Uh, can my noble friend say whether that assistance is being given currently uh, to these groups in the talks involved with the ELN? Yes, we are. We, we continue to work very closely with the government and with communities uh, uh, to bolster protection for human rights defenders who, as a noble baroness will know, have faced particular um, uh, problems, casualties uh, in recent years in Colombia more than many other countries. We are also... Through, our, through this work, but also through our international climate finance, providing additional support, uh, really ramping up our support for indigenous communities, both in Colombia and the wider region, uh, having uh, secured a pledge from other donors uh, of nearly $1.5 billion for the same. So um, uh, securing land rights, for example, is a major part of what we're trying to do with indigenous people, uh, bolstering support for human rights defenders, and supporting the transitional justice mechanisms uh, that are being trialed and rolled out across Colombia. To the noble lady's question, in November, uh, with an interparliamentary union delegation, I met with indigenous, for the first time indigenous community representatives in the Colombian Senate and Parliament, uh, and her point is very well made. Uh, can the minister reassure me that, that transitional justice support is a key element of the work that the UK is doing, coordinating with Norway and Mexico and facilitating? Those indigenous community MPs were optimistic now, uh, but the next stage for transitional justice is going to be critical for community buy-in, especially on land rights issues. The Bar Council Human Rights Committee supported this work. Are we continuing to support it? 
Uh, again, I can, uh, the, the answer is yes. The UK has contributed uh, over £26 million towards trans transitional justice mechanisms and victims of the conflict uh, in Colombia since 2016, and that includes uh, included supporting the Truth Commission's work to gather testimony from Colombians both in Colombia and abroad, as well as working to enhance the investigatory uh, capacity of the Special Jurisdiction for Peace, uh, Colombia's post-conflict special court. Um, this is an issue that was also raised by the UK's Global Ambassador for Human Rights, Rita French, uh, who met the spe Special Jurisdiction for Peace uh, recently to discuss our ongoing support. This, uh, we celebrate the progress being made in the peace talks. However, there is concern, not least from the United Nations, that the Attorney General, Francisco Barbosa, is obstructing those talks. He is also obstructing the release of young people unfairly de uh, uh, detained following demonstrations in 2021. What more can the government do to ensure that full due process and legal rights are respected in such cases. Yeah. Yeah. My Lords, Colombia is a, a, a human rights priority country for the UK, and that means that we will continue to monitor any and all impacts that, that limit our ability to support civil society organisations. And as penholder of the UN Security Council, we consistently raise the importance of the participation of civil society and young people to realise the full benefits of the 2016 peace agreement in Colombia. Um, so we, we are, we are um, fully utilising our position as pen holder, but also maintaining Colombia as a high priority for human rights. My Lord, the, the Minister will be a, a, aware that the, the, the President, uh, uh, Gustavo Petro... Uh, okay. Right. Okay. Trust, as a director of the Hay Festival, we have been going to Colombia now for two decades and seen a great deal of changes. It always astonishes me that conversations like this happen without mentioning the word cocaine. Cocaine is uh, the largest uh, growth factor in Colombia. Every year, despite gazillions of dollars that has been spent by other countries, particularly the USA, the actual amount of cocaine that is grown increases. We may have got rid of some of the Colombian cartels, but now the Mexican cartels. So to talk about peace processes without confronting the issue of cocaine, which is illegal across the world, which a lot of people in this city help fund, is completely lunatic. So while I'm not asking the minister to say whether he approves of the idea of legalisation, which the previous president, Santos, did, and who was outspoken and verbal that you could not stop the crime without it, can you at least tell me what conversations you have? Um, no bonus is right to, to point to, to the role of drugs. Colombia is still one of the largest producers of, of cocoa and cocaine in the world. Um, the, the trade obviously fuels violence uh, in many areas of the country as the illegal armed groups fight for control of territory and trading routes, and that violence disproportionately affects local communities, in particular indigenous communities. Uh, social leaders get caught up in it, and former FARC combatants. So she's right that, that this issue is in, inseparably, inseparably linked to, <coughs> to the peace process. And therefore, uh, it, it is, it is a, a, a feature of our discussions with Colombia. We're committed to working bilaterally with uh, 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 international partners, including Colombia, to disrupt wherever we can the supply chains uh, that feed the domestic market here that she points to. Uh, my own opinion on legalization is not strictly relevant, but, but I can, it is interesting that many former presidents of Colombia take the position that President Santos uh, took uh, uh, on this issue. My Lords, uh, on the 8th of May, the UN Committee on Torture raised concerns over the lack of progress in investigations into the police abuses against protesters during Colombia's national strike mobilizations of 2019 and 2021 under the previous government of Ivan Duque. Can the noble Lord, the Minister, tell us what representations we've made to ensure uh, that those investigations are properly uh, pursued? Because one of the things about the past is holding people to account, and we desperately need to ensure that in Colombia. Yeah, yeah. Yes, he is. My Lords, through the same uh, programme, the CSSF, um, which has been the main vehicle for delivering much of the support that we've provided Colombia in this area, um, so through that programme, um, we funded the Colombia Peace and Stabil uh, we, we supported Colombia's Peace and Stabilisation programme. 
and launched a £2.1 million police innovations for stabilization in Colombia project uh, three years ago. And that is supporting the transformation of the Colombian National Police. And that work is ongoing. And the embassy, of course, regularly reviews the overseas security and justice assistance assessments, including what steps uh, can be taken both to mitigate the risks and hold uh, 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 wrongdoers to account. My Lord, sir, the, the Minister will be aware that the President, His Excellency Gustavo Petro, recently pointed out that many of the key activists in the ELN are actually Catholic priests who are exp exponents of the so called liberation theology. Now, I don't want to get the Minister uh, into trouble with the, the Vatican and incur their wrath, but would you not agree with me that the Catholic Church really should be more proactive in, in these negotiations? <laughs> it's, uh, I'm, I hope I'm permitted just to agree with the noble lord. Um, it would be great to see the Vatican uh, using the influence it clearly has in the region to support the peace process.